Okay, so sketch this beast. So it's five to the right and down twelve. Right? But yeah. it's one, three, three, four, five. Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Oh wait. Right, I is to the right. It's your standard unit vector along X. And then J is down. Is that what you drew, Drake? Oh wait. Yes, that's what I drew. Okay. Five. Negative twelve. Okay, and then it says find the magnitude and direction angle. So how do we find magnitude? Um, Somebody else. Pythagorean theorem. Yeah, Pythagorean. Pythagorean. Or you can just do the square root of five squared plus twelve squared. Yep. But Mr. Moraskis, it's negative twelve. Doesn't matter. Because you're gonna square it, fool. You know uh, it's gonna be positive. Square up. So what's that? Thirteen? Yeah. Yeah. Alright. So the length of that thing, the magnitude. Did they give us a name for this vector? No, they didn't. No. Just, so the, the magnitude. Ah, we can we can pretend it's V. Yeah. The magnitude is thirteen. And the direction angle. Uh, how do we do the direction angle? How do we find that? Ella? Well, I did, um, like, drew a triangle, and then it was probably wrong, but, like, it's a 90 degree angle right there, so the direction angle is at the origin, right? Yeah. Yeah, so it'd be sine, um, sine of theta equals 12 over 13. Is that right? And you did the inverse sine of both sides? Um, yes. And what would you get? Uh, 292.62. Good Lord. Oh, well, so you got, you got something, oh, wait, but wait. then you... Yeah, I went around. And so yeah. I got, I got that. Theta is, um, wait, that's wrong. So I got the theta, and then I subtracted that from, like, the big circle. From 360? And I got 292. So, okay. so actually, this is theta here. Yeah. So theta... 292 degrees? 0.62. 292.6. Two. Let's just say 292 degrees. Okay. Wait, yeah. 292. Yeah. Oh, you did the sign. Yeah, so remember we said the direction angle, the formula we wrote down was the inverse tangent yeah. of the y over the x. So inverse tangent of what's the y component? Uh, the 12. It's negative 12. Let's keep, let's keep the sign. And the x component? Negative it's 5. It's 5. So what happens when you type that into your calculator? I'd like to know. Uh, so you get like 6, I've got 67.38. But then I'm 67 degrees? Oh, it does. I got negative 67. Yeah, I mean, you got negative 7? 7.38. And then I minus the 360. So, yes. does that look like it could be negative 67 degrees? No. Yes. 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 Yeah, yeah, it does. Yes. Yeah, I believe that. So you just take the 67 away from 360, and that would give you 293. Yeah. Wait, don't do the sign thing. Um, either one is fine, but Ella had to think about it. If you just throw it up in this equation, boom, you'll be all right. Except, of course, when there's something funny happens. And so I'm going to give you an example of something that you got to be careful with. There's always exceptions to the rule. Um, let's see. Let me try something different. Can I erase? Yeah. Are you guys, can we solve this example? Um, and you're going to see something funny happen, I promise. Well, I mean, since you're going to be laughing that, so hard. Not. Um, yeah, you can, right? Uh, 
So, do you want to draw a picture? Let's, yeah. I, I like drawing pictures. They're fun. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So, left two, up four. So, from the origin to there. Yeah, Pythagorean. So, square root of 2 squared plus 4 squared. So, what is that? The square root of 20? 4 plus 4 is So, 4 plus 16. Yeah. So, root 20, could we call that root 20? Could we call that 2 root 5? Is that a thing? Yeah. Remember simplifying radicals? So this is exactly 2 root 5, or approximately 4.47, or something, I don't know. Yeah? Yeah. Okay. Now the direction angle. So let's just use our formula, inverse tangent of the y over the x, and something's going to happen. Oh, you have a name? Wait. I'm waiting. Negative 63 degrees. That's not negative. That's not. This is for sure not negative 63 degrees. What the poop just happened? Where's negative 63? No. Probably here. Uh, yeah. Why? So it's like the exact opposite. Yeah, so um, let me give you a little brief chat about inverse trig functions. So. Side note, you don't even have to write this. Just absorb it forever. So y equals x squared looks like this, right? Yeah. yeah. To do a true inverse of this, you switch all the x's and the y's, and you get a sideways parabola. Because you're just exchanging the x's for y's. So it's that. But now this is not an actual function. It fails the vertical line test, which you may or may not have learned about. But did I tell you about that? Yeah. Cool. So, because uh, this, if I said, hey, I want to know, because this, this is essentially a, a square root function, right? Squared, square root is the inverse. So if I said, hey, what's the square root of 4? 1, 2, 3, 4. I can't have you saying, well, the answer could be 2, or the answer could be negative 2. Right? There needs to be one answer. By definition, a function uh, is a relation such that each x value has exactly one y value. Right, so if, if I say, hey, f of 3, you better tell me one thing. It can all, there can only be one answer. Right, you can't say, well, that depends what day of the week it is or how I feel about it right now. That, there needs to be one answer. Right, so in order for a square root function, so if you graph y equals the square root of x, you won't see this. You'll see this. Uh -huh. They trim it. They go step, step, and they take off that part. So now it's an actual function. Uh, the vertical line test says if it passes through a function twice or more, then it's not a function. If, it, if you have a curve and it crosses it, that's why when we when we graphed circles, we couldn't. We had to graph the top and the bottom because this is not a function because it crosses twice. But half of this circle is a function. That is a function, and the bottom half is a function. We had to combine them. So, there's no, you can't have a function with, um, that fails the vertical line test. It's not a function. So, the tangent function, oh, geez. You haven't, probably haven't seen the tangent function, have you? Okay. So, the tangent function. <coughs> Looks like this. There's a, a divide by zero that happens, and so we get asymptotes. Okay, and it's it's like this. It's a periodic function. All trig functions are periodic because uh, it's like a circle. You can you can go around the circle 360, 720 degrees, right? You can just keep spinning around, and that's where all the sines, cosine, and, and tangents all result. I'm spinning around and making little right triangles. Right, so anyway, so this is the tangent function. Yeah? And it goes from 
uh, 90 degrees to negative 90 degrees, and then it repeats. Yeah, you guys with me so far? Wait, yeah. so you just graph something and do it like that? Yeah, this is the tangent of x, if you graph that. You okay? What about sine and cosine? Sine and cosine, those are really fun. Um, the, the sine function uh, goes like this. They're wavy. And then the cosine function is the same, but it starts up top, and it does this. So sines and cosines, they're called sinusoidal waves. <laughs> so th those, are, those are wave functions, and the tangent is this weird thing. Wait, do those lines just go on forever? Yes. This goes to positive and negative infinity. Anyway, I thought this was going to be a short story, uh, and now I'm talking forever. But what happens is, if you do the inverse tangent, you switch the x's and the y's, and you get, uh, let's see, we're going to have positive, what's this going to look like? I think it's going to look something like this here. And then... Are those cubic? No, it, they go, it's this sideways. So this is the That's inverse. Not a function. Exactly. This is not a function. So it what they do is they, way. yeah, it's going to fail the, the vertical line test infinity times. So bad. Is, ah, 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 oh, ah, ah. It's just going to keep failing. Right? Just never stop failing. Um, so they trim it. So that the, the inverse tangent um, only lives in between, oh, this is a positive, obviously, 90 degrees and negative 90 degrees. So anytime you plug into the inverse tangent function, the answer you get will always be between 90 and negative 90. So you can only use the inverse tangent correctly between 90 and negative 90. So if your vector is in here, you can, you can trust it. And if, it's not, and if the vector is over here, the tangent just says, uh, uh and it flips it. <laughs> it says, uh, I don't know about that one. Yeah, uh, over here. Because this is, the tangent lives over here. This is the neighborhood that it lives in. But and can this, you flip this is the other side of the tracks where things get shady. You know, there's a... So all you have to do is switch the negative sign. Can you, yeah, can you just switch the sign? When you get a, like, if you have the inverse tangent of something that's other than 90 or negative 90, like... It works there. So it, what I do is I get an answer, and then I just add 180 to it, and it'll flip it back into the where it's supposed to be. You add 180 to the like 63, so you get positive. Yeah. So add 180 to that, and it'll be uh, where it's supposed to be. 117. Does this look like a 117 degree angle? Yeah. Yeah. Booyah. So that's the funny thing about inverse tangent. It only is accurate in these in the first and fourth quadrant. And if you need to do work over here, you just have to add 180 to your answer. 